Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to our live podcast. I'm Al Vashel, and thanks to the thousands of people who have continued to join us in our humble beginnings with these podcasts. Now, even though in spite of our fatal audio problems that we've been experiencing in the last couple, we apologize for the inconvenience there, but I think we're back on track. Now, speaking of technical problems, in case there are any technical issues tonight and our live stream drops, you want to give us a few minutes to get back up and running. And you want to check back frequently on rumble.com slash user slash Ian Juby slash live. And that'll take you to the latest link, live link that's happening at that time. And again, that's rumble.com slash user slash Ian Juby slash live. And that'll take you to the live link. Now, I'm here, of course, with none other than the man himself, Mr. Ian Juby. Ian, how you doing? I'm doing okay, Al. How about yourself? I am always doing wonderful, wonderful, my friend. <laughs> and Roland, Roland is joining us, and he's not melted from the Texas heat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> What's Thank the Lord for air conditioning. <laughs> yes, I don't have any. Yeah, air. we're it's... going from all, by from, by Roland all the way from. Is it Texas? Yes, mm-hmm. Northeast Texas. Northeast Texas, the big state where you can travel for miles and miles and miles. It's almost That's as right. big as Ontario. Well, thanks for joining us tonight, Roland. Glad to be here. <laughs> now, once again, before we get into it, let's talk about a few things. Um, so, again, we're going to go to the chats on Rumble quite a bit tonight. So, consider giving a tip through the Rumble rants and get your comments or questions highlighted and support the creators of this podcast. Now, if it's your first time giving a tip, you'll have to fill up the payment info, but the larger the tip, the longer your comment stays on top and highlighted in the chats. And for the rest of 2023, the beautiful thing is 100% goes to the content creators, which is pretty phenomenal. So don't hesitate, get in there, give your tip, and let's get your comments and your questions uh, answered for you tonight. So, okay, Ian, I gotta talk to you, I gotta ask you about something. I've been hearing a lot about this girl. You know, I want you to talk about her a little bit more. I think her name's Lucy. Maybe yeah. you can give us a little bit of a rundown on her. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it, it's been a fun couple of days. Uh, her name has come up an awful lot. Uh, in fact, uh, Cowboy Bob. Cowboy Bob. Uh, Piltdown Superman on Twitter. Uh, so he calls him, goes by the creation cowboy. He always does these uh, Darwin Day things every year, uh, celebrating Darwin Day with creation evolution stuff. So... Anyway, that, that uh, he posted this just uh, actually today, uh, one hour. So I've got an echo. Can you guys hear an echo? Okay, audio is quiet now. Thank you. I'm just checking the comments real quick. There's a bit of an echo. Yeah, I'm turning them down. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for your feedback because... Half the time, we, we wouldn't have a clue there was an audio problem because I can't hear. So we're still trying, still yet another system. Uh, anyway, uh, let me go, okay, right screen. And, hey, Roland, can you say something yes, profound? What's that? that? That's good enough. Perfect. Okay, we can hear you. <laughs> that was all I was concerned about that. Uh, I'm going to scroll down here. So, uh, Piltdown Superman posted this with a a video of a knowledgeable student teaching an indoctrinated teacher some things about Lucy. And let me see, screen and two. There it is. Got all three of us in there now. So, uh, yesterday, (coughs) Paleo Logos. Posted this on Twitter, on my twi- on my timeline, at Genesis Week. Did you notice that your reconstruction of Lucy's pelvis has the os coxa? Now, he did correct this, os, os coxi. Uh, your os coxi is upside down and backwards. Now, he is correct. Or she, or they, them. I don't know what their pronouns are. So, uh, I'll just go with it. Uh, they are correct. And it's very interesting. This show aired in April April 15th of 2022. 
So 16 months ago, and Paleo Logos, you are the first to notice this. Uh, you're correct. I did not notice it, and I'm very grateful you pointed it out because uh, as, as we're about to see, this actually has a profound significance because my boo-boo actually detracted from my argument. So for those who haven't seen it, uh, the, the reference for that video is in the description. So it was Genesis Week, episode 36, the very last one of the 40-part series. And if you're wondering why it's episode 36, it's because we had the, uh, the four-part miniseries in the middle on UFOs, aliens, and Genesis, right? That was part of that series. So, uh, there's, uh, so there's 40 parts. This was the very last part. And I was sharing uh, what a gentleman I called Dr. Z was, uh, was pointing out about Lucy's pelvis. Now, Lucy is a very famous fossil. Have you guys both heard of Lucy? Yes. You have Roland? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see him nodding. Yeah. Sorry, I'm shaking my head. Yeah, okay. I think if you're, if you're over 15, 16 years old, you would. <laughs> yes, yes. So... <laughs> Here's, here's the Lucy skeleton, allegedly our ancient ancestor. Dr. Zed uh, put together a powerful case of which I only shared a very, very small part because he has yet to publish on this. Um, but basically what this boils down to is Johansson and team took ape fossils and human fossils, all found in the same area, put them all together into one skeleton and called it our ancient ancestor. In particular, the pelvis is what, uh, I've forgotten his Twitter handle already, Paleo something, Paleologos. So Paleologos was not talking about this part here. It's talking about right here. Now, I actually, I, I went and dug it out of storage and it's a funny story about how that wound up um, upside down backwards. And he's correct. So basically, the fossil itself is very fragmented. Uh, for example, if you take a close look, uh, that's a horrible picture. But you can see right here, this part broken off. And so what happened, as you can see, all they have is the left side, this broken fragment the coccyx, the tailbone, and that is clearly, that is clearly a human coccyx. And what happened, I sculpted the different parts, or print, 3D printed them, basically. And so the parts here, because there was actually fragments missing uh, from the joints here. So I had that filled in with plasticine which is exactly what I've got here. Now, normally you, you, you try and use like a bright colored plasticine. So the fill-ins are obvious. Uh, actually, I've got an example right here. Of, there, right there. So uh, this one, they've only actually got part of the fill-ins in. So you can see all the breaks and cracks. This, this hip was like, fractured into a whole mess of pieces. And this, of course, uh, many, many of the longtime viewers will be well familiar with this story because Owen Lovejoy, the anatomist, uh, he's got that infamous video of him taking a Dremel to the different, to cast of the different fragments because it didn't look, uh, it, it was, it was distorted. And I agree with him on that point, but what are you doing taking a Dremel to make it fit better. I mean, can, can, you, can you guys imagine the firestorm that would happen if a creationist took a fossil and said, oh, that, that looks too much like an ape human. Here, I'm going to adjust it and fix the distortion. Oh, I'm going to do it with a Dremel. Uh, you can imagine the firestorm that would happen, right? So I still, I still hold Owen Lovejoy uh, in contempt for that one, in contempt of court. Uh, regardless, 
This is his reconstruction. What I also did was I then mirrored it so you could see, see how uh, both sides. And so it was mirrored and you see you got a better, better look. I also had the pieces in here. Now, the day I went to film that, that episode, I was moving everything around and it was stinking hot in here, just like it is today. 27 degrees Celsius currently, and I've kept it cool all day. Uh, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, Roland. It's probably like 85, maybe 90. Yeah, that's not right. No, <laughs> no, it's, it's stinking hot. So I'm moving yeah. this around, and the plasticine, basically it melted in the heat. It got soft, and these bone fragments fell off. Now, these ones are easy to put back in place, but I was in a hurry because it was one of those, it was Tuesday, literally, I'm supposed to have the show edited, closed captioning done, everything delivered to the television station, preferably by Tuesday night. And Tuesday afternoon, I'm moving this over and everything falls apart. So I frantically put it all back together. I, obviously, I wasn't paying attention because Paleo's logos is absolutely correct. I put it on upside down and backwards. Now, why I think this is so entertaining it's because, first of all, it's taken 16 months for someone to point this out. There are a lot of haters out on the internet who would just love to embarrass and shame me and my mistakes. Why has nobody pointed this out before? It's very interesting because if you correct my mistake, it actually dramatically strengthens the case I was making that video. And I would encourage you all to go and check out that video. Dr. Z's point was that that is not the hip of our ancient half ape, half, ape, half human ancestor. That is the fossil hip bones of a pygmy human. Now I have here again, another replica, and this is to scale of a pygmy human pelvis. And unfortunately, the reason the parts in question in Lucy's hip aren't here is because after I filmed that, I went on the road for a short tour out in Nova Scotia. I had this with me. And once again, the plasticine melted, these parts fell off and apparently fell under the table. And I didn't see it when I left Halifax. So uh, I got a text from Pastor Rob like two days later with a photo of the of the fossil parts, right? He's like, is this yours? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's mine. So I'm afraid I don't have it here to correct it. But I will simply show everybody these two and compare them. Yes, it's flared out slightly farther, but that's probably just distortion from the, the fossil, which everybody agrees was compressed. And so if you actually fix those bones, it dramatically matches the human pelvis and not, for example, eight pelvises such as the chimpanzee. Let me see if I can do this because it's still falling apart in the heat. I didn't make these for going on the road, can you tell? <laughs> it was for one shoot and that was it. The difference between the two pelvises is dramatic. And so what Dr. Z has, is, is stating, and he has built a powerful case for this, this is a pygmy human pelvis fossil. And they have erroneously mixed it in with eight fossils. That fossil of Lucy is a genuine half ape, half human fossil. Right there, you're looking at it. But it's only because they mixed up human bones with ape bones. That's why. So this isn't our ancient ancestor. And thank you for Paleo Logos for pointing out that, that mistake. Um, I actually do genuinely appreciate it because this actually bolsters the case that I made and presented in that video, and profoundly so. So I would challenge everyone, go check the video, judge for yourself. And you can even see the error, because my error took away from this argument. 
because you can compare. Uh, let me see if I can call this up. Fortunately, Paleo Logos provided a nice big screen capture. So you can compare the pygmy human pelvis with Lucy's pelvis, but down here it's all mixed up because that's where I mixed it up. If you reverse it and fix it, suddenly it becomes dramatically like the human pygmy pelvis. And uh, uh, wow, wow, what were their names? John Sanford, I've got the book here somewhere. There it is, Contested Bones. Uh, Dr. John Sanford and Christopher Roo, uh put this book out a couple of years ago. And over and over again in their book, they point out how common pygmy humans are. And I hadn't realized this until I read the book, but they're absolutely correct. Uh, you, you guys hear about the, the Hobbit fossil, the, hob the fossil they called Hobbit? I, I don't know too much about it, but I did hear about it. You, you heard about it. Okay. So again, it's another classic case. It's pygmy humans. In fact, on that island, there's a people group of pygmy humans. So why are they going into this cave and saying, oh, look at the fossils of our half ape, half human ancestors, which, wait a minute. How do we know these are the people that are still alive today? Did nobody compare their bones? <laughs> so anyway, okay, that was our tangent. Um, I think that was all I had to say about it. It was. Okay, did I miss anything in our, in our overview, Al? I don't think so. I think we're good. We should just remind everybody once again, just in case you lose the feed or whatever, you want to go back and find us, you want to go to uh, rumble.com slash user slash Ianjubi slash live. If you lose it there and you can't seem to find it, uh, you can go to uh, TikTok. You can check out myself on TikTok at Al underscore Vasho, and I've also posted it there. Shameless okay. plug, Ian. Excellent. Do you have a shameless plug, Roland? No, that, that sounded good for, to me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, where were we going next? So I guess we're just going to introduce Roland. Yes, sir. Okay. So, Al, meet Roland. Hey, and Al. Roland. Hey, Roland. <laughs> and Roland, meet Al. So, uh, yeah, Al is one of the board members of Core Ottawa. Uh, as you can tell by his beautiful baritone voice, uh, he's been doing like radio ads and stuff for like most of his life. Uh, Roland. He knows that voice. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's the one that does all the movie. Uh, the big, the, the, he was from the West Side. <laughs> Or whatever. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and I really thought that was you, Ian, doctoring it digitally. But now I know the real <laughs> That's right. Okay. Oh, and before we go on, I should check. Yes, there is an echo. Test bot. He's quiet. Okay. Although in Texas, it's somewhere in triple digits, is it not? Oh, probably. Uh, that's just a comment on Rumble. And let me check Facebook real quick for comments. I would tell him he is wrong. Douglas Bruce Sharp. Uh, let me see if I can. Okay, let's see if this is going to work. We may lose audio here, folks. Uh, please be patient if we do. Hopefully, you guys can still hear me. So here's uh, Roland. Or not Roland. Douglas Sharp. I'm going to just make that bigger. 107 in Tucson, Rob Asarud says. Okay, I only got a chance to... Uh... Oh, yeah, that's right. He'll know. You're... Roland knows, Rob. We go back a long ways. So, let me... And I'll, I'll explain real quick how I know Roland. Here, yeah, stepped on it. I straight femurs. I have angular femurs. Okay. I'm going to go to YouTube chats uh, just for a second here, guys. Uh, there's uh, If I can make this work, hopefully audio is work. Oh, we lost Al. 
oh, this is part of the uh, uh, this is part of the problem of when you're when you're frantically doing stuff at the last minute. So can, can you hear me? You wait, can hear you. So okay, that's why you don't need to see my face. Okay, okay. You have a be- you have a face for radio, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I always said. Yeah, yeah. So Remy Canadian saying Lucy had straight femurs that point straight to the ground. Humans have angular femurs. Uh, I would actually, I believe, um, the if you especially if you take a look at them, the knee joints in particular appear to hold uh, show the angle similar to a human, and. The, there's a lot of contention over whether the knee that was found with Lucy in close proximity uh, resembles the one that was found two kilometers away and, if I recall, 70 meters deeper underground, um, which, uh, what was that? That was AL-129, maybe? I forget the, the designation for that fossil. But in the Nova PBS special, Owen Lovejoy describes about when he first saw this knee, which they had later on attributed to Lucy in in the interpretation, right? Even though it was two kilometers away, basically in their mind, the only creature around was Lucy. So it had to have been there. Uh, And that they used that knee to interpret, interpret Lucy as walking upright. And Owen Lovejoy takes, actually, I have... (laughs) <laughs> a replica of it right here. And Owen Lovejoy takes the knee joint and he says, you can t- I knew instantly that was a human knee because it locks like a human knee. And you know what? I agree with him. Totally agree. That is a human knee that was found in rock layers deeper than Lucy. So once again, uh, all, all the major paleontologists paleontological bigwigs of the day, back in the 70s and 80s, they all wrote the same thing out of Africa. They found uh, ape ape fossils, human fossils, human tools, all of them, including Johansson himself. They all reported this. Then Johansson turns around and just decides, oh, well, it's all one creature, and lumps them all together into Lucy. Um, anyway, there's more detail on that in the book. Um, okay, going on. Do, 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 do. That's one nasty bone spur. <laughs> yes, it is. Two pelvises, pelvi. Oh, probably. <laughs> probably. Uh, Homo florians, floresiensis. Thank you, Remy. Yes. Found on the Indonesian island of Flores. Uh, for, for those of you who are not familiar with it, he's correct. That is the... The, ho- the Hobbit uh, fossil. Face for radio. Yes. Signs for the win. LOL. Doki Doki Bible Club. Hi, Kevin. Okay. Do you know Do you know Doki Doki Bible Club, Kevin? <laughs> uh, okay. Let's go back to Roland. There it is. So, Roland and I go back a long ways, as well as Rob Seibert, who we were just reading his comments in the chats. Uh, we, we met at Last Days Ministries down in Lindale, Texas. Um, it would have been, oh, I don't want to go when that was. It's going About to 30 us, years ago. Oh, shh, shh, shh Don't say <laughs> that. <laughs> when, when did you get there, Roland? I arrived in 83, and I think you were that probably long ago. early 90s. Yeah, yeah this I, is my 40th year here in Texas. Wow. Next weekend will be 40 years. Wow. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay. So I knew you were there for a while. We same as we did then. What's that? We don't look the same as we did then. No, that's <laughs> true. I ran, I ran in... a long way in other ways. <laughs> that's right. I, I stopped in to visit uh, Francois Boutin. You remember him, eh? Oh, good. Yeah. So I stopped in to visit him in... Uh, Montreal and opens the door. Ian, you've grown. You've grown. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah. So Roland, Roland and I worked in operations at Last Days Ministries. Uh, for those not familiar, Last Days Ministries was uh, the ministry started by Keith Green, the singer, and his wife, Melody. 
And um, I don't even remember when they started that. But I mean, if you got there in 83, like, wow, um, that was a while ago. Uh, well, they moved, they moved to Texas in 79 and then started in California a couple of years before that. Yes, that's right. Because the, the crash that Keith and everyone was killed in was 81, I believe. It was 82. It was. 82? July 28th. Okay. So we're coming up on the 41st anniversary. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So Roland and I were in operations. So we, we performed operations. Uh, <laughs> so we go back a long way. Now, Roland, would you mind sharing your story with everybody, please, about what happened? So first of all, I, I think I got wrong the description. This was all 20 years ago when you were first uh, diagnosed with lymphoma. Is that correct? 21 years ago, yeah. 21 years ago. So w would you mind just sharing your story about what all happened? Um, I'm going to jump in with questions. Al probably will as well. I know viewers will want to hear about your uh, attempts at holistic treatments too. Uh, that, that's, that's always been interesting to me too, which is why I was always asking, you know, I was always asking you, well, what are you doing? You know, I'm, I'm really curious. I want to know about this. What worked, what didn't, what did you see, you know? So, but, but why don't you start with that? Sure. Well, my journey started really in mid 2001 and since then, I've seen the Lord heal me of not just cancer, but also uh, asthma, uh, arthritis, right. and um, of high blood pressure. Um, and right. as maybe uh, has been alluded to, alluded to it's because uh, or due to dealing with some underlying issues that um, in many cases are affecting our bodies. Mm -hmm. So uh, early to mid-2001, I was um, 41 years old. I would say I was going, going through a midlife crisis. I was uh, a bit depressed. I, I was uh, not happy with my status in life. I expected by then to be married and have kids, and I wasn't. And I was um, really just um, um, not having a lot of uh, focus and goals in my life. And so I got depressed. And it was that summer of 2001 that I started feeling really bad. I started getting uh, a cough that wouldn't go away. Um, doctor said, well, you're allergic to East Texas. You need to move away. And <clears throat> it, it just took months and months to, to figure out what was going on. But I, I was having high fevers, like 104 Fahrenheit. I was um, having night sweats and just feeling really weak and Doctors couldn't figure out what was going on. It wasn't until December, I think it was like uh, Christmas week or something like that, that uh, wound up in the ER and a doctor there <clears throat> immediately after seeing a chest x-ray saw that I had an inflamed or uh, uh, enlarged spleen and, and he saw uh, right, right outside of my lungs some lymph nodes that were very enlarged. So fast forward a couple of three weeks and they determined that I had Hodgkin's lymphoma. And by that time, because there was such a delay in trying to figure out what it was, uh, it was already in stage four. And I had been attempting to, I did not want to do chemotherapy. So I was attempting to do um, various uh, alternatives one of which was a, an ozone sauna, which is basically like a clamshell that you get in, <clears throat> your head sticking out of the top, <clears throat> your body is elevated to, I think it was 107 or eight degrees. And so the, a, a bottle of oxygen was converted to O3 to make ozone. And that was the heat and the humidity would basically drive it into your system. And I, I think that if I had continued with that, um, I, I think I saw some progress there. Right. So much so that um, at one point my, my bloodstream was saturated with calcium. And I, I started, I couldn't hold anything down. I was um, vomiting. I was, had high, high fevers. And this was, it, it got worse 
after having done the ozone sauna. Right. Well, I later did some uh, early internet research and I found an article that said that when cancer cells are dying, they um, come out into the bloodstream in the form of calcium. And so, hmm, I wonder if that was, uh, if I was on the right track. Because <clears throat> I, re I remember was, that. Yeah. So right around that time, I think it was like two days later, and I, like I said, I couldn't eat. I was just sick as a dog. But uh, my parents took me to the oncologist that I had, I had been seeing, and she kept insisting that I do chemo, and I, and I said, give me give me another month and the doctor says you will not be alive in another month you have less than a month to live i don't know if that was two weeks or three weeks or or whatever but um, i remember at the time you told me she she physically grabbed you by the shoulders and told you you didn't have three weeks that's right that's yeah. right and so i as depressed as i had become even though i was serving the lord you know, in church and, and plugged in and all that, I was, I was depressed. So literally when she said that to me, I had like this ping of emotion that was a positive emotion. I thought I'll be with Jesus in less than a month. I'll, I'll get to graduate and not have to put up with this nonsense. <laughs> so, uh, but they had to admit me to the hospital because the calcium level is so high it was clogging up my kidneys. That's why I couldn't hold anything down. So they had to give me this medication to break up the calcium and eliminate it. And if I can um, just jump in for a second here, uh, because only two years ago when you and I were talking about this, um, we, we were discussing the, the calcium thing. Um, mm -hmm. And I looked up some papers at that time there was actually several papers that were talking oh. about how cancer cells actually generated cal calcium in the bloodstream um, mm. the, as as they were growing when and nobody could figure out why so it's just mm. it's just interesting i'll just mention that for the for the viewers um because this is uh but this this is good because i want everybody to hear as it happened because I remember all this going on and it, and what happened next was it, it brings home how radical what happened next was. Mm -hmm. So anyway, carry on. Sorry. So my, my parents and my friends and family basically pressured me into going with chemo because the doctor said you have 60% chance of making. It. Mm -hmm. And at that point I, I was not making it. I was, yeah, I was going to be dead because of the the way it, it had progressed. So I, you know, threw up my hands, okay, okay, whatever. And so they started chemo. They had done a PET scan uh, prior to that, and they basically I lit up like a Christmas tree. And right. uh, every, every spot of light was uh, showing where cancer was in the spleen and... Um, and I think you, I think the lungs, most, most of the organs. And, and it was, um, it was something like 90% of the lymph nodes too, wasn't it? That I don't remember, but I, I probably so. Yeah, it was all over. Uh, yeah, but yeah. what they were focusing on was the, uh, you know, the chest area. And that's, that's where it lit up like right. a tree there. Right, right. Thankfully it didn't get into the bone marrow. Um, yep. But anyway, so they started the chemo and Three and a half months passed, and I did, I had, did eight uh, chemo treatments, and then they did another PET scan, and that PET scan showed nothing. There was no n no lights at all, and of course I said to the doctor, "Good, I don't I want to stop chemo," and and she said, "No, you've got to complete the whole <laughs> six month round of it, uh, or it could come back with a vengeance." Uh, but in the meantime, I had become acquainted with Henry Wright's ministry. It's called Be in Health. Mm -hmm. uh, he had written a book. Actually, it was a transcription of a seminar done for Wycliffe Bible Translators in uh, North Carolina. And it, the, the seminar or the, the conference had been transcribed 
And so I got a hold of that trans transcription and I started reading through it and um, some things started hitting home. And so uh, would you like to talk about Henry Wright? Yeah, I'm just, I lost his book cover. <laughs> oh, okay. apparently it didn't copy it over. So give me one second. Okay. No problem. I now uh, have it. The book, yeah, A More Excellent Way. And of course that comes from the scripture, uh, A More Excellent Way. Mm -hmm. And this is so, in the references as well for uh, the viewers. So the book and everything is in the, is in the references in the description. Uh, the website, uh, Dr. Henry Wright has now gone on to be with the Lord, but the website is still up and maintained. And I believe they're still selling his book. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I even found a, a PDF version on their website. Oh, okay. 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 Was that yeah. one of the older versions? Do you know? Mm, I think it's more one of the, the newer ones because it has testimonies at the end. You're right. I saw that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Do we have a link? Do we have a link to that website? Maybe in the. Uh... It's in the references. Um, Beinghealth.org, I think. Yeah, uh, be, be in health. Um, Either.org or.com. One second. I will look it up real quick. Uh, the Yeah, because I meant to make a slide for that. And what I will do. Be in health, all one word, dot com. And what I will do later on, I will update the references if I can find a PDF copy online anywhere. And I'll, I'll include that in the updated references. So okay. that'll, be, that'll be in the description below the video for all the viewers. So now it was, there was more than just Dr. Wright as well. Like you were, you were telling me about, um, how, uh, in your words, uh, the church really kicked in. They were praying for you. They were just, in your words, they were just loving on you, uh, literally That's from right. all over the world. And Exactly. Mm -hmm. I counted, I think it was uh, 34 countries and 40-something <laughs> states that, from which people were contacting me, loving on me, calling me. I got phone calls from every continent except for Antarctica. And people were literally oh, crying. We and dropped the ball. Oh. What's that? So we dropped the ball. What do you mean? There was, there was nobody at YWAM that was down in Antarctica. Oh, man. Yeah, can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you just... know what? It, it, something clicked. Mm -hmm. It really it really messed with me in a good way. Mm -hmm. The fact that people loved me. I right. realized, wow, I'm loved. And I was going through this time of not loving myself because I wasn't happy with my, my situation. So something clicked and I, I um, got out of the depression, even in the midst of the, the sickness and the treatments and everything I went through. Mm -hmm. And it, I, I honestly believe that that's the, the point when I started to heal. Right. And so I think it was like the year later. So it would have been, so 2002 was when I did the, the chemo and everything, I think it was 2003 that in May that I went to Georgia to Henry Wright's ministry. I, I went for the week long, they called it, um, was be in health um, for your life. It's a week long seminar. Right. And honestly, it was information overload. Um, <laughs> I followed a lot of it, but it was so much information that I was a little discouraged. But it took some time, as they call it, the walkthrough or, or walkout. Uh, process, pray. Um, and so I started seeing, uh, in fact, in Henry Wright's book, it's really interesting because if you look up Hodgkin's disease, mm -hmm. it, it lists, and by the way, so Henry and his ministry and others too, over 30, 40 years have looked at case histories of people that they've ministered to and found uh, amazing correlations between what um, certain diseases and what people are go through, different mm -hmm. issues that people go through. And yes. I'll, I'll just, um, to capsulize it, I would say a majority of diseases boil down to two different strongholds. 
One is unforgiveness and bitterness. The other is fear, stress, anxiety. And if you look through those books, and what a coincidence! You know, what's that? So what a coincidence! I know it's amazing. And you know, people get bent out of shape sometimes when you know we maybe say that there's a there's a sin issue that could be uh, behind a, a specific disease. But who doesn't deal with fear? Yep. Who doesn't deal with having to walk through forgiveness? Mm -hmm. um, that's a that's common to man. That's common to all of us. So I, I don't get offended. Uh, I, I look at it as an opportunity to seek, seek the Lord, you know, seek uh, my own heart. What am I walking in fear? Am I have, is there anyone I haven't forgiven? And so what they found was for cancer in general, bitterness is a huge, huge thing. Mm -hmm. And so Henry Wright and, and that ministry found that Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is what I dealt with, was uh, they had multiple, and it read my mail. It was like, okay, rejection, <laughs> uh, self-rejection, broken heart, depression, mm -hmm. and that's where I was. I was going through that, and I basically, by agreeing with the enemy, mm -hmm. and and really, it's, it's, if depression, I hear it's, um, anger turned inward. I've heard and, that too, actually. Yeah. Yep. And so I think that's where I was. I was, you know, midlife crisis. I wasn't happy. And so the stage was set for cancer to take over. And so when I finally dealt with that and repented for one thing, of you know, a lack of gratitude, that a lot of times depression is a lack of gratitude. Good repented point. of that not just by myself between me and God, but also I had people that I prayed with. And um, <clears throat> so, yeah, it's just amazing how there's, there's consequences to sin, or in this case, uh, unforgiveness, bitterness toward myself. Um, but there's also conditions for healing. And the condition would be, okay, go back to where you were supposed to be. Repent of Hating yourself, repent of right. uh, being ungrateful. And, That's and so powerful. It, it is, it really is. And if I can jump in, oh, sorry, were you going to say something now? No, that's it. Okay. I just wanted to say it's uh, okay. very powerful. If, if I can jump in for a moment. So because because Al came into this not having a clue what we were even going to talk about tonight, <laughs> I didn't really explain it to him. And I know a lot of the viewers won't grab it either. So let me just backtrack a hair and take a look at Dr. Wright's, the principles that he started laying down and they were biblically based. So when we take a look through the scriptures, you see a lot of verses like this, Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So you see an emotional or a spiritual root, which leads to a sickness. And also, interestingly, in this particular verse, it actually gives a bit of a uh, the opposing view. When that hope is fulfilled, it actually becomes a tree of life. But look at this. Only one chapter later, a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Jealousy is like cancer in the bones. And the English Standard Version says a tranquil heart gives life to the flesh, but envy makes the bones rot. And so what he, what Henry Wright was pointing to was these, these biblical principles. You can see verses like that all throughout the scriptures, which is why I wanted to do this tonight. Because now, even just in the past two years, I've now had to say goodbye to a few friends of mine. Um, and I myself had to deal with some sickness which when I, that's why I, that's why i said oh what a coincidence um because they like you said they read my mail uh i kept having recurring bouts of cellulitis and it was just like clockwork uh december february december february and um and there was no reason rhyme or reason for it why is this going on 
And I mean, at one point, it's so for those of you not familiar, cellulitis is a bacterial infection under the skin. So it gets between, you know, sort of that that fat layer between your skin and your muscle. Uh, the bacteria gets in there and starts eating you, basically. Uh, it can be really serious. The That flesh eating disease that was all the terror a few years back, um, that is what it was, but the bacteria happened to be antibiotic resistant. So there's mm -hmm. nothing that you could do. So they were literally amputating limbs. And um, to give you an idea of how fast this happened, after, after it happened to me twice, I learned a few of the tricks uh, where I would take a marker and I would, because you can see it, you can see the infection. It's a big red, red patch red swollen patch right and so you take a marker and draw an outline of the red patch and the doctor and i the third go around were watching it grow in front of our eyes that's how fast it was spreading so it's a, a it can be very dangerous and really serious re literally in minutes um and so they wind up making decisions like okay do we need to amputate here and they got to make that decision in minutes. I mean, it's serious stuff. Um, where was I going with this? I forget where I was going with this now. <laughs> um, what's that? Well, cellulitis. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So coming back to the the biblical principles. So, Doctor Wright came out with this this talk. And by the way, uh, I should mention this. Ah, uh, do you like my? Oh, you guys can't see it. I'll show you my. I'll show you my. Isn't that a pretty picture? Mm-hmm. Beautiful. That was after about a thirty-five hundred foot vertical climb, and I was I was heading up to this ridge right here. So I still had a ways to go. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not what I was going to show you. Is I was going to show you. Here it is. Henry Wright's book. So, Dr. Wright's book um, is slightly terrifying because it is 802 pages. <laughs> so, don't be intimidated. Once you... Like I said, information overload. <laughs> uh, yes, very much. So, uh, it's... If you go through the beginning and understand the principles, then... Hey, I'm going to make an I'm going to make an analogy here. In in on the railroad, we had the Canadian Rail Operating Rules, and it was a book that was a lot more than 800 pages. You were not expected to memorize the book. You were expected to have a copy on duty and accessible at all times. That was that was one of the rules. In fact. <laughs> was one of the very first rules. You will have a copy of these rules accessible with you on duty at all times. So look at it that way. This is a reference book. So you, know, you can read the whole thing if you want, but the way I approached it uh, was as a reference book because there was a second book that you put me onto. One of, uh, what, what was the relation between Dr. Stridham and Dr. Wright, did they have any relation of any kind? I'm not aware of that. I just know uh, Michelle Stridham compiled a lot of material from Henry Wright, from um, who else? Let's see. Um, who's the, the doctor, the, the brain doctor? Um, Caroline Leaf. Caroline Leaf and know. others. Uh, but also, she's a medical doctor. I think she was born in uh, Zambia, Zambia I think, eh? or yeah, Zambia, and, and she was uh, educated, and I think she has a practice in South Africa. Gotcha. Um, but I, I found YouTube videos of hers. Uh, she, she's very insightful. And so in her own medical practice, she was putting a lot of Henry Wright's material uh, into practice and seeing amazing results. Yes. And here's where the reading my mail comes in because it was actually her book, this book. Now for the record, and I'm going to come back and explain what I mean by this. 
Uh, but for the sake of the viewers, there are things they say that she says in this book that I flat out disagree with, um, especially at the beginning. Uh, for example, she talks about uh, viruses and bacteria uh, being basically not created, but basically of the devil. Um, uh, yeah, and that's so I, I have to disagree with that because... 99.99999% of the time, viruses and bacteria are beneficial. It is when they wind up in the wrong place or they wind up uh, with a mutation and mm. change that they become unhealthy and dangerous. Mm. Uh, aside from those rare times, they actually have tremendous purpose and benefit to us. Uh, to, to all animals, uh, plant life, everything. Um, there is, so God created those with purpose. But we're in a fallen world. Things get yeah. sick. Things get mutated. Uh, the, and I've, I've dealt with this on the show multiple times, so I won't go into a whole lot of detail there. But I will say this. She nailed me. <laughs> so when I went... Uh, wound up in the hospital repeatedly with serious cases of cellulitis. And you had given me this book. And so I looked it up. All right, what's going on here? Okay, what does she say about it? Because, uh, and by the way, I think this book is 790 pages. Uh, I counted. <laughs> uh, it's the same thing. Use it as a reference manual. That's all I did. So I looked it up. Bacterial and viral infections. I had a bacterial infection. I kept recurring. And here we are, page 377. Apart from the above scenarios, infections with bacteria, parasites, or fungi are a result of your immune system being weakened or damaged during stage 2 and stage 3 of stress. Yeah. What I was going through at that time was an Un unprecedented levels of stress that I had never really experienced in my life, except possibly when I was suicidal uh, in my early 20s. Um, and I've, I've shared my testimony about that before. Um, and in fact, uh, with um, Derek, uh, we, we just did, I just recorded a podcast with him a month and a half ago or so, Derek Rogers. And he, uh, we, we talked about mental health issues, right? And I was pointing out how so many mental health issues are healed simply by restoring your relationship with God the Father, which is initially what we were created to be. We were created to be in relationship with our Creator. God walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the evening. Um, he had relationship with them. And now that relationship was broken. Our relationship with them is also broken. And this leads to all kinds of things. Uh, paranoia. Uh, were, were you paranoid when you were depressed? Was I paranoid? Mm, not necessarily. I, I was yeah. just despondent. Okay. Okay. I was very paranoid. Mm. You know, go to a restaurant, everybody was talking about me. And they were saying oh. bad things about me. Uh, and I was, I was paranoid, but later on, once my relationship with the father was restored, it, it in fact, it, it had been gone for probably months. I didn't even realize it had left and it just dawned on me one day. It's like, Hey, it's gone. And it was because when the creator of the universe loves you and you know it, who cares what those people in the restaurant think or say? Exactly. Even if they are talking about me, which they weren't, but it's paranoia, right? Yeah. But even if they are, who cares? What they say does not matter. What my God says is what matters. Mm -hmm. uh, and my buddy Kevin, who uh, I, I believe is in the chats tonight, so he's probably listening tonight, but he, he talked about, he was autophobia. So he, uh, he had very uh, heavy autophobia where you're afraid to be alone. 
when you restore your relationship with God the Father. You have a relationship. You're no longer alone, even when you are alone. So things like this. You, you get so many mental health issues that are restored and healed just from the restoration of your relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ, which is how that's accomplished. So anyway, they they nailed me. I won't I won't go into what was stressing me out at the time because it was a bunch of things, but it was also in the middle of like the global pandemic. That did not help any. Right. So, uh, but anyway, so uh, uh, and before I forget, while I disagree with some of the things Doctor Strider says. What I would point people to look at is the I, how many testimonies does she have? It's oh, got to be it's got to be hundreds. Count. Oh yeah, and the same thing for Henry Wright, countless. Right. Yeah. So yeah. look at their track record. Yeah. And that's what I keep coming back to. They are on to yeah. something here. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, what, go ahead. Sorry. What, what Henry Wright also says uh, at the seminar said was uh, eat the meat and spit out the bones. Because yeah. we're going to have disagreements. We're going to see things, things differently. But, um, you know, that helped me because I saw a few things myself when I was at the seminar. I'm like, uh, I don't know about that. But I just put it on the shelf and, you know, uh, ingest the good stuff. Yes. <laughs> you know. And yeah. another thing I found, I think, I think it's very important. A, a huge key is humility if if we're operating in pride and we're not willing to deal with our own issues we're not going to receive from god you know um, he's attracted to humility and he's re repulsed by pride we know right. that from the scripture and um so in order to receive healing you know kind of like the um the aa thing they say is that you have to, the first step is you have to admit you have a problem Guess yep. what? We all have problems. Yep. And for for us to, you know, for me to say, oh, I don't believe that stuff because, you know, that's, that's not theologically correct. Like, guess what? We have issues. And if, when we do know that there are um, consequences to sin, consequences to fear, consequences to um, unforgiveness. In fact, Look at Matthew 18, 34 and 35. It's pretty heavy. What did Jesus yeah. say would happen to that slave who did not forgive? It says, oh, yes. And his Lord moved with anger. His Lord handed him over to the torturers until they should repay all that was owed him. Then Jesus said, My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Now, People have said, well, that's talking about hell. No, you don't repay in hell. I think right. if I think we have the con the consequences of unforgiveness now. And sometimes it results in sicknesses, you know. Um, sometimes there's other other ways that we ha we get the consequences. And like I said before, so the condition for healing is to repent, forgive, you know, uh, and when it comes to uh, fear, stress, anxiety, there's so many scriptures referring to that. You know, cast all your cares on him for yes. he cares for you. Um, there, um, I, I have a, a couple of teachings that I've, I, I've done, one on forgiveness, one on uh, fear, stress, anxiety. And uh, I, I actually gave them at a pastor's conference, two different pastor's conferences in Cuba in January of this year. Uh, also in Guatemala, uh, I would, I would uh, share them with you, but they're in Spanish. So I don't, unless <laughs> I, c I can give you the link for those who speak Spanish, but okay. I also uh, taught this at a pastor's conference in India. Yep. Very interesting, interesting to see the um, responses. And when there's humility is when I've seen uh, true, um, true healing take place. Right, right. Very interesting. Okay, I'm gonna go check. The I, oh, go ahead. May I add one more thing? So, yes. uh, what Henry Wright talks about forgiveness, he says that there's three ways we need to forgive: forgive others, obviously, forgive ourselves, 
and forgive or not hold a grudge against God. And I was in that place of, forg I was not forgiving myself and I wasn't happy with God because of my, my state, my, the state that I found myself in. So right. I had to really forgive myself and forgive God. You know, it sounds dumb to say forgive God because he didn't really do anything wrong, but not hold a grudge against God. Sure. And, and you know what, that's so actually a really good way to put it. Be because we talked about that in DTS at the last day's ministries and, or mm -hmm. ICT as you went through. <laughs> um, but we talked about that, you know, forgiving God. But that's, that's a really good way of putting it because that was my issue. Was, that was why I backslid for eight years. Mm -hmm. And that was why I, well, I destroyed myself, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why, you know, I got so desperate. And as I've shared previously, when I, when I came back to the Lord, I was so angry with the things that Jesus said because of my misperceptions, mm -hmm. because of what I thought Jesus stood for, because of what others had done to me and said to me, etc. cetera. Um, just, I was completely out to lunch on what I believed. Um, but I was desperate. It was only a matter of time before I put a bullet in my own head. Mm. So I would, I'd read through the Gospels and I'd read, read through, say, Matthew. And I was so angry by the things Jesus said, I would literally whip my Bible against the wall. Uh, mm. Go over, pick it up again, just to whip it against the, ball, <laughs> the wall again, right? Uh, mm. My poor Bible. I've even got that around here somewhere. It actually survived. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yes, coming coming back to that with the whole forgiveness, it's a step. It's a step. Yeah. Forgive God for what you think He did. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to do that with people. Uh, they did nothing wrong, but you perceived they did something wrong to you. Yeah. Um, anyway, and uh, I'm sure you, you've heard the uh, the saying that uh, not forgiving someone is like. Uh, you drinking poison and waiting for your enemy to die. It it only affects you negatively. They may yes. not even know they they've messed up. You know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't it all come down to really personal pride? If you really think about it, mm -hmm. it's all personal pride. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think once you get past that hump, I think we've all been there at some level or another at some point in our lives or another, and some people get over that hump. Some don't, some struggle with, struggle with it, some turn to God, some don't. And uh, it's when you release that personal pride, I think, sure. that it opens up your entire world. Uh, for yeah. me, it was the same thing. Of course, the depression hits a lot of people in different ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to let go of my personal pride. Mm -hmm. That was probably the most challenging thing for me to do in my entire life. That was the biggest obstacle for me. My pride was something I wanted to hold on to and I didn't want to let go until the day that I did. And then I, uh, then life changed. Life changed for everybody. Yeah. And well, like I said before, God's attracted to humility. And so that's the open door to, to his grace. He gives grace to the humble, right? <laughs> and another thing I want to point out was uh, talking about consequences. Mm -hmm. Henry Wright likes to quote this one a lot. Proverbs 26, 2. Like a sparrow in its flitting, like a swallow in its flying, so a curse without cause does not come to rest. Right. So in other words, if if there's a, a root issue that's that's at play, um, that's that, that um, where, it, where it will come to rest. But if there's not, then... You know, people can live a whole, their whole life without sickness, you know, or, you know, maybe a cold or whatever, but anything serious like a, a chronic disease, there's, they found almost always there's, there's some kind of a root issue. Right. And there's, um, uh, give me one second. I got to go take care of a, a bad comment, but I also have a really, really good question. I won't pull it up on screen for privacy's sake, um, but I was actually going to go this direction, so I'm glad Eric had brought it up. Okay, give me 30 seconds. I have to deal with a bad comment. 
bad, bad comment. Forever and delete. Failed, <laughs> failed, failed to mute. Probably because they're gone already. Their account's probably already been... Yes, I would like to delete that message. Thank you. Okay, so uh, with regards, I know I mean, we were talking about this before we went live. Um, because I have encountered this uh, when, when talking with my friends who are sick, right? Um, we are in a fallen world. Every single one of us, except for those that the Lord takes home, are going to die. And maybe it'll be cancer. And maybe it'll have nothing to do with spiritual roots. You grew up in Chernobyl. I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, there's... There, a different consequence, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, different, yeah, different root. Different root, right? So... Um, and, and we, we acknowledge that. I, I know you were only going to agree with that. Um, I think Henry Wright was saying like, he figured like 80% was probably, uh, spiritual group causes mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He even said that, uh, he felt like a large percentage of breast cancers were result of the actual mammogram. Uh, yes. And I read a paper on that once. They had pretty compelling arguments. Yep, I have to agree with them on that one. Okay, so Arthur, I won't, I won't display it just for privacy's sake, uh, but Arthur wrote in, uh, I have TBI, uh, brain damage from too many concussions, severe mm. chronic pain and sciatica, really bad over the last month, and narcolepsy. Uh, I slept on average of 20... 20 hours a day would either book uh, sorry folks I, I my camera is in the road of my monitor so I have to lean over to be able to read it would either book touch on any of those if you can only get one uh, the TBI makes reading recall really hard so even one is hard to read so if you were to pick a book which one would you suggest what's what's your thoughts on it Roland um, <clears throat> the, the thing that comes to mind that they teach at BN Health is mm -hmm. a lot of times when there's trauma, it opens the door for the demonic. Like the enemy comes in when sure. we're our weakest and try, tries to mess with us. So while there, you know, that condition was obviously the root issue of that was uh, trauma, yes. you know, um, Ph physical trauma, yeah, yeah. concussions, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it could be that the enemy has taken advantage of that and is um, needs to be dealt with, needs to be removed. Okay. You know, we, yeah. have, we have to do spiritual warfare sometimes. Right. That's that's an interesting point because, uh, yeah, I mean, I can think of a lot of traumatizing things, especially with. Um, I was I was one of the moderators on a Christian online support group for people with DID. Uh, or uh, used to be called multiple personality disorder. And that is from, uh, is directly caused by the continuous, uh, what's the word for that? The progressive past test of trauma, past tense of mm. trauma, uh, like continual trauma, continual yeah. sure. severe abuse to mm. the child during developmental years. And um, uh, which usually involves physical trauma as well, usually sexual abuse, um, which I should have given a trigger warning in case there was anybody watching and listening who has DID because they will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but so there's hope. There is, absolutely. And, w and I've walked through that with some of these people. Um, it, it's yeah it was it was an eye opener when i first joined mm -hmm. that group boy did i that's a mount everest learning curve let me tell you drinking from the fire hose mm -hmm. but uh wow. but anyway yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a good point because there it's both spiritual trauma and physical trauma 
Mm -hmm. And they both caused, they both opened the door to, well, spiritual attack, demonic stuff. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how we dealt with it, too. Mm So, okay. Excellent. Regarding regarding the books, um, oh, yeah. You know, they're free downloads in in PDF format. So it's not like you got to go spend money on a book and choose one or the other. I've got pretty much uh, several books that are, I use as reference ma- manuals. Now, Michelle, well, both uh, them, Michelle and also Henry Wright's book, they do encourage you to read some of the things associated with it. Like make sure you read about forgiveness and not, not just look up the, the physical symptoms and try to yes. do it that way. But get some insight on it because again, it, it is spiritual warfare and you need to know a little bit about it. Yeah, in, in fact, uh, thank you for bringing that up. I will, uh, I'm going to have to put this full screen. You'll notice what she said. when I, So when I looked up my bacterial infection, this is where I wound up. But notice that what she says to understand this. So she's saying, you know, these, these infections are the, being caused by a weakening of the immune system. And this really is not that far-fetched. Ask any doctor about the effect, the ill effects of stress. Yeah. It's a, it's a matter of fact. It's, that's not a question. So, and, and it's been found that stress affects your heart. I mean, even scripture, you know, and men's hearts failing for fear of what was going to come upon them. Yep. Stress affects your immune system. Stress will lead to allergies even. Uh, yep. I, I mentioned earlier I had asthma for yep. 20 years, chronic asthma. And God completely healed me when I dealt with, in that case, it was fear of abandonment. Interesting. Very interesting. Look at kids with asthma. Many times they're from a broken home. Their father's not at right. home. Or there's unrest at home. So anyway, that was a side trail. Uh, no, but that's a good one. Uh, I meant to mention. Really one. Yeah. yeah. And, and I meant to mention uh, my eczema also disappeared with the cellulitis. So once I backtracked and uh, sometimes, I mean, especially with stress, sometimes the solution is get rid of the stress. Sometimes you can't get rid of the stress. So you have to learn how to deal with it in a healthy way. So it's mm-hmm. not stressful anymore. Right? So yeah. It's kind of a catch-22. You know, you know, many times over and over again, during times of stress, even this past year, Mm-hmm. will quote those scriptures and and and, and personalize it lord i cast yes. my cares on you because i know you care for me and yep. you know he hasn't given me the spirit of fear but a power love and sound mind and you know this, there's multiples that that i will say out loud as a prayer and and also as a lord i can't do it on my own i need you to help me to to cast my cares on you you know i'm carrying yep. a load and i know you don't want me to and you mentioned thankfulness that's uh that's a big one um Huge. that i learned over the years uh yeah. but before we move on uh so let me I'll, I'll finish this up so i i i jumped ahead again remembering i was using her book as a reference book so i looked up in the index bacterial infections led me here it's being it's because of a weakened or damaged immune system during stage two and three of stress to understand this, you need to read the chapter on long-term effects of fear, anxiety, and stress on your body on page 178. And that was, that was what led me to the keys of how, how to deal with this. I first of all identified what was stressing me out, even though I pretty much already knew by that point. The moment I read this, it's like, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> Um, there was a lot of things that happened when I, when I left CN, um, that just, yeah, anyway, uh, I won't get, I won't go into that. Um, okay. Let me go to the comments. Measure. Let me just, uh, is there anything you want to add in Al, or anything? No, we were just talking about it, and I had a couple of pieces of scripture that came to mind. Maybe I could just read a couple while you're looking at the uh, comments. Um, but w- one of them that kind of stood out for me, and I, I went to Thessalonians 3.16. I'm just going to read it 
uh, okay. as, it, as it is written. So now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with all of you. And that basically means just submit to him everything, your fears, your anxiety, your, your pride, submit to him <laughs> and, and let him handle it. And he will. Uh, it's so hard to do. But again, once you submit fully, the healing process begins and you see it almost immediately and you feel it almost immediately. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. Um, I, Arthur said it was okay. He doesn't want concern about privacy. And I want to, I want to share with you guys his follow up comment. Cause I, I think it's really profound actually. Uh, Arthur Smith, he, so he says, thank you. The part about blaming God for doing something to us was interesting. I don't blame him. I was the one doing the dumb stuff, but maybe there's something there over the years of unanswered prayers for healing something over God, not doing more. That's, uh, that's, that's profound. Uh, thanks Arthur. And actually I'm, I'm, I've been dealing with that very issue for the past oh, six, seven months or so. Uh, that was part of what I was sharing with you before we went live there, Roland. But it's just been, you know, stuff going back 30, 35 years, you know? Sure. But, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, let me check the comments. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'd just like to comment on that. Um, yes. I dealt with that very thing as I was struggling early on in my Christian walk. And uh, I'm here, you know, I've conversed with a lot of Christians and, them talking about God will change your life and God will do this and God will do that. And I've prayed and prayed and prayed and I'm thinking, yeah, nothing's changing. This isn't working. So there's got to be some kind of magical element that I'm not getting. But then as I was reading the scriptures and talking to more people about it and going to my pastor at the church I was attending, it kind of came to realization. It, it may not necessarily, and it is in scripture. It's always in scripture, but you may not always look or find it. Sometimes you need uh, to, to, to talk with uh, other Christians to really understand. And for me, that's exactly what it was because I had a number of people say to me, well, wait a minute, you want things on your timeline, but God doesn't work on your timeline. God works on his timeline. And this is where your patience and your trust and your faith has to come in and, and come into play. You may want something and think it's best for you, but God sees the future. And perhaps in the future, he knows that it's not best for you, even though you think it is. Do it on God's time, timeline, yeah. not yours. And in the long run, you will see, and the answer will eventually become clear why he said no. <clears throat> and that changed me profoundly in my early walk as a Christian. Mm. Mm. It's good. So we got a couple of very interesting YouTube comments. Um, so, uh, Al, can you see the screen, by the way? I can, yes. Okay, good, good. So, Jungle Dragon, uh, I haven't seen many people recover from schizophrenia. I know that it is possible. Now, I have a very long story about that. I won't get into, um, but I will say that, um, uh, a young man I was working with, he had schizophrenia. I didn't know that. And he had been in the hospital previously for months. It was horribly depressed, heavily med, uh, just, it was just a horrible traumatizing experience for him. So when he started having schizophrenic hallucinations, um, which again, because I didn't know what schizophrenia was at that time, um, he was terrified to go back to the hospital. And out of desperation, um, I was pumping him full of this uh, holistic stuff called uh, barley green. Um, did, you, did you ever hear about that, Roland? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, barley green? Yeah. So um, I never tried it. Okay. Well, I was, I was messing with it at the time, right? I was taking it, and I knew it stimulated norepinephrine. So I, literally, I'm desperate. And it wasn't in, eventually, I wound up taking him to the hospital anyway. But by that point, he was okay with it. Because it wasn't until three days later that I realized within, probably within the hour of giving him barley green, 
the schizophrenic hallucinations had gone away. They stopped. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they did not come back. Um, they, they, they came back a while later. Um, but during that time, um, while he was taking the bar degree, the, the hallucinations were gone. Um, interestingly, uh, several months later, because I was taken to a counselor and we were trying to uh, uh, deal with the, the, the stuff left over from the schizophrenic hallucinations, you know, he thought he was God and all this stuff. Um, so we were trying to deal with that. And we were getting out of the car at the counselors. And he's, he said to me, he said, you know, when we got out of the car, I thought you told, I thought you told me you loved me. Did you say that? And it went click. I said, that's profound. First of all, okay, while it's true, I didn't say that. But he already knew I didn't say it because he asked me, did you <laughs> say that? So there was, there was something different about it. Um, and this is what I've been, I've, I've actually come to know a number of people with schizophrenia. schizophrenia and... Um, and I always bring that up to them because they can tell. Uh, the one guy was uh, he, a very friendly guy, and he would talk to me on the phone all the time, and, he's, and he watches my TV show. So he would ask me, he says, I, I think I'm on your TV show with you right now, am I? And so I, I just pointed that out to him. He said, no, you're not, but you already know that. Now, I, I, I don't know how to tell the difference. I'm not schizophrenic. But I know just by what you're asking that you do know it's different. You can recognize what's hallucination and what's not. You may struggle with it, but you do see a difference, right? So uh, anyway, that was one sidetrack. Uh, whoops, wrong screen. There was another comment here that I wanted to bring up to you. Oh, yes, George Bond. So right here. He's asking, did you get to the auto autophagy stage to starve the cancer? Uh, do, you, do you know what that means, uh, Roland? I don't. Okay. I'm not terribly sure either. So give me one second. I'm going to look up a dictionary. <laughs> now, I, I had attempted before I uh, went with the chemo, I attempted those alt alternative treatments to try to starve the cancer. Now, cancer thrives on sugar. It thrives on a, a lack of oxygen. And, um, and also, well, that all ozone sauna, the, the heat also apparently is, uh, cancer can't thrive in high heat. So those three things are gotcha. that I was telling you. Okay, um, and, and just real quick, I think what the autophagy is, is basically, uh, fasting, um, which is interesting because if, 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 do I have that right, George? Um, I'll, I'll ask you that because, uh, I've read a number of papers that made a correlation between the keto diet and, uh, and healing cancer, which is interesting because the keto diet is very much like starving your body. Um, so anyway, I'm sorry, go, go on, Roland. Uh, carry on with what you were saying. Um, well, one thing just came to mind. Um, another minister that I followed a good bit was, is uh, Thurman Scrivener uh, from just north Ooh. of Fort Worth. Yep. He's, he's gone on to be with Jesus now. He was in his, his 80s. But, but he, was, uh, he did a lot of deliverance ministry. And he would insist that a lot of this is a demonic thing that needs to be dealt with spiritually. Now there can be physiological issues that would lead to schizophrenia or, you know, different things. But uh, many times, spiritual warfare is needed because it's it's not just a physiological thing. Right. And sometimes the demonic will throw off our chemicals. Yep. And, you know, where where we have all these symptoms, and um, so it, it's a um, it's a complicated thing because there's emotions, there's the spirit. Yep. Um, there's physiological, um, and, and I don't know that you can put a, um, you know, make it a formula. Yes, for, for that's good. That's a good on. point. And, and if I can come back to my, my schizophrenic friend as well, I didn't know he was schizophrenic. I didn't know he was sick at that time. 
but the enemy sure knew. Um, and they were taking full advantage of it. They were, they were in there like a dirty rag and they yeah. were just messing with his head when his head was already oh. being messed with. Right. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. um, now George, uh, did write back. He said, yes, auto autophagy stage is usually after four days of fasting, eat berries, etc. And yes, Ian cancer survives on sugar and carbs. Um, measure over on, I'm going to bring this one up over on rumble was also saying, uh, where did it go? Autophagy stage. Okay. Why is it not? Oh, cause I got to scroll down over here. Nope. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> autophagy stage is where your body starts cannibalizing itself it begins mm, to destroy okay. poorly functioning cells and replace them with new cells okay that's that's a really good way to put it thank you for that uh major okay now it is 8 35 our time i know it's nice and early for you roland but it's getting close to my bedtime oh. uh, <laughs> um is there is there anything you wanted to talk about, Al, or or ask about? No, but if we're talking on it, uh, there's something I wanted to touch on. I wanted to ask you both if you knew the name Barbara O'Neill. No. The Australian naturopath. Nope. She's a lecturer. No. This woman seems to know the body, particularly as it pertains to cancer. A lot of her lectures pertain uh, about cancer and cancer treatment and all this stuff. One of her uh, most notable lectures, and you can find them on YouTube and I think on Rumble and stuff like that, but she talks about cancer cells. And she says how um, how they thrive in acidity, so low right. pH, uh, where they can't survive in an alkaline-rich body or environment, so high pH. And she says she's... Um, there, there was a particular element that she would recommend that people take, and it's, it's, it's just, I, I can't think of it right now, but um, anybody can look it up. Just look, look up Barbara O'Neill. She's an Australian uh, naturopath, but she was talking about the acidity levels and the alkaline levels and stuff like that to control and kill cancer cells. And she spoke about just what you were saying about uh, sugar, uh, that cancer cells cannot live with no sugar they thrive on sugar so it's just kind of interesting how you were talking about it and barbara o'neill that came to mind because i watched some of her videos and a lot of it revolves revolves around cancer and it's pretty amazing what the body can do and how really natural natural um healing powers that god has created on this planet that every ailment can be cured naturally every single one We've done it for thousands of years. Yeah. I'll, I'll speak into the acidity thing, too. When I had cancer, I had read about that, too. So I actually got my – my dad had a swimming pool. My parents did. And I, I got one of those strips. And seven oh, is yes. supposed to be, um, you know, the, the – the, what is it, neutral or whatever. And I, I put it in my mouth, and I was definitely acidic. And mm. one thing I read was – when we're walking in bitterness and, and unforgiveness, it, like I said before, it messes with our chemistry. So we become acidic. So now we can do, um, you know, some physical things to try to adjust that. But the, the, uh, the biggest thing to do is to walk in forgiveness. I, I give this uh, example um, when, I'm, when I'm teaching on forgive, unforgiveness. You know, if um, let's say you have a, you're in the mountains and there's a nice stream and you're thirsty and you go to drink water and it tastes putrid. Well, you could filter it, you could boil it, whatever. But look upstream and find out, oh, there's a dead animal there. OK, we got to take that dead <laughs> animal out and then we don't have to deal with all the the physical, you know, like a, deal with the uh, acidity issue when. If bitterness is causing the acidity, okay, let's deal with the bitterness, you know? <laughs> right, right. 
That's how I that's how I got E. coli poisoning, by the way. Repeatedly. Oh really? <laughs> every every time we'd bite my buddies and I would bike down to uh the Swisha here, big hill down, and on the way back up there's this this uh street that goes under the road. And I'd always drink out of that. Well, years later I I'm upstream at my other buddy's house, and here they have an outhouse which is leaching oh. into that stream. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, yeah, I oh, I've cruel. lost count how many times I got E. coli poisoning, because, oh. and we didn't know what it was. I just get sick for a few days, right, and smell really bad, and uh, yeah, yeah, oh. it was nasty. Well, at least yeah. you should buy one of those bottles that has a filter in it. That would help you. Oh uh, yes, yeah. Well, they didn't. I don't think they existed then. But oh, okay. I was just a kid. I mean, you know, so. But I, anyway. I wanted to mention one, one more thing about yes. you know we talked about uh, humility. <laughs> Uh, James five sixteen. Of course, that's the one that starts off with, "If is anyone, if any sick among you, call for the elders." In sixteen, it says, talks about humility. Confess your sins one to another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. So we see not mm. not necessarily a um, um, it, it's not a, a formula, but it's it's a, a sequence we have to do. We have to humble ourselves, and specifically confess your sins one to another mm -hmm. and pray for another that you may be healed. I think that's, that's critical. That's, that's a good point. And on that note, uh, one of the, I meant to say this at the start of the lives tonight, but um, one of the reasons I really wanted to talk about this tonight um, was because, like I said, I've had, I've now had several friends pass away over the past few years where I tried to talk to them about this and every time I tried, it's like, I should have had this conversation years ago. Why are mm. we trying to have this now? The whole yeah. principle is prevention. If you're exactly. at the point where you're being hospitalized and told you're going to die in like a couple of weeks, it may already be too late. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, that was one of the reasons I wanted to do this because it's just, Leave no stone unturned. Uh, prevention, if possible. And if you do get healed, awesome. Because if you're sick and in a hospital and dying, simply because you're harboring unforgiveness? I, I, I don't imagine how you'd feel when you get up to the pearly gates and you're like, uh, oh, really? So I'm ahead of schedule just because I didn't forgive someone? You know, so it's like leave no leave no stone unturned, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. anyway, I, I want to mention about mm -hmm. uh, again on on unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes uh, we can get very immediate results. Uh, I had an occasion. Mm -hmm. I was probably in six or eight years ago where I was having some arthritic pain in one of my knees. This came up out of nowhere, and. I, I asked the Holy Spirit to show me, Lord, is there anybody that I'm holding a grudge against? Because I had heard mm. that the the acidic or the, the pain in the knee, much like gout is, is uh, what is it, uric acid? Uh, oh, yes. I, I read something about some of the pain in the knee joint can be acidic. And anyway, so I, I asked the Holy Spirit to show me, and I'm, I'm not kidding you, within two seconds, somebody's name came to mind that I needed to forgive that I, I had been offended by something that he said like a couple of days earlier and I hadn't really dealt with it. So I, not even to him, I just, you know, into the air to the Lord. I said, Lord, I forgive, you know, so-and-so. I'm not going to hold a grudge against him in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And I kid you not, within five minutes, that arthritic pain was completely gone. <laughs> and it had been with me the whole morning. And I thought, oh, I should take some ibuprofen, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and so when it was gone... I mean, I, I got up and, you know, jumped around a little bit to, to see, is it really gone? Is it really gone? And it was, go it was totally gone. Another, wow. uh, I think, a couple of weeks later, I had a pain in the opposite knee. And it was the same kind of thing. Well, I knew that, okay, I'm not going to just take meds. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to show me if there's a root issue. And once again, there was somebody that had emailed me the previous day 
you and I, uh, Ian, know her. Um, I'm not going to mention her name, but she she said something to me that, that really bothered me, and I hadn't let go of it. So same thing. Uh, I asked the Lord to forgive me for holding that grudge, and I forgave her. And again, I, within, the next thing I knew, there was no more pain. Wow. And so it was very immediate. Now, sometimes getting rid of that dead animal in the creek takes a while, like for our immune systems to be strengthened. And because the immune system can, as, as you even said, Al, um, our immune systems can heal just about anything if we give it a chance, if it's not bogged down with, um, you know, bitterness. And so that, that was just another one of those things. It's, it can be immediate, but sometimes it takes a while for the immune system to be able to do what it was designed to, to, to do. Mm -hmm. Now we've got yeah, another, right. yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, we got another uh, comment on Rumble. Major was just saying, additional info on ontophagy. You can use this to get rid of an excess skin from extreme obesity. Whoa. Okay, thanks. Uh, oh, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not <laughs> noted. <laughs> Comment of the night. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, so ex get rid of excess, stream, excess str skin from extreme obesity and other such things. It's not something to be afraid of. Thank you. All right. So it is 845. I think we should call it a night. Um, th uh, let me just double check okay. YouTube one last second. Make sure there's nothing. As well, as well, as well. Okay, lots of comments in the chats. Thank you everyone for uh, jumping in and joining us tonight. And thank you for the comments. Uh, it's been a long, continuous string. Very interesting comments too. And hope you guys really enjoyed this. Uh, I So this has been 21 years now, Roland. 21 years, complete bill of health, not just the cancer, uh, but also Asthma. And what were the other things you mentioned? Uh, high blood pressure, which I didn't oh, yes. talk about. But um, And then um, what was the other one uh, that I just mentioned? Uh, arthritis. Oh, yes. Arthritis. Uh, yep. A high blood and pressure. Basically, um, I, um, I, was, I was carrying a load that I wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> and it's a fear, yeah. stress, anxiety thing. And um, it's funny, my, my office mate here, he, when I told him I was having high blood pressure, we checked it, and it was uh, it was pretty high. And he said, let me pray for you. Well, I knew better than just to let him pray. I knew I needed to take action, like in um, James 5.16. I needed to humble myself and say, I'm carrying this load I'm not supposed to be carrying. Mm -hmm. And so let me pray first. And so I did. I prayed, and I said, Lord, forgive me for carrying this load. I cast my cares on you, and I know you care for me. So I repented. And then he prayed for me, and we checked my blood pressure right after he said amen, and it was normal. And I was told, that doesn't happen that quick. That was like three minutes to go from high, super high, to normal. Well, but it does happen that quick when you put your trust and faith in absolutely, him. Absolutely. I, again, I took the dead animal out of the stream by <laughs> saying, okay, Lord, I've I, I'm going to cast my cares on you. <laughs> I'm using the dead animal as an analogy. I, I love that. Yeah, that, that is a good one. That is a good one. And I just got to say, Roland, it is, I'm so happy to have this live stream. You're still here. 21 mm. years later, you know, you were told yeah, yeah. basically go home and die. You know, oh yeah, yeah here, take chemo, but. Hey, Roland, Roland, mm -hmm. Ian. Mm -hmm. God is good. Yeah, it amen. Is. Amen. It is. Uh, okay, so thank you, Roland, for joining us. And, and Al as well, even though you wound up kind of just stuck there <laughs> with us. But I, I like I like having you here. You had good input, Al. Very good. <laughs> well, I tell you, it's been a real pleasure. I love being a part of this. Mm -hmm. I love meeting people like you, Roland, that are just an inspiration mm -hmm. in life. Thanks. You know, and a strong uh, advocate for the Lord. Mm -hmm. God bless you, and God bless you as well. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to close off uh, with any remarks, Al? 
Yeah, sure. I just want to, I, I'm, I'm going to go to scripture as I always do. So uh, I'm just going to read it uh, as it is written in Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, prayer by prayer and supplication, with, with thanksgiving, thanksgiving, let your request be known <laughs> to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. I've Amen. got that verse on my kitchen cupboard door. One, One of my, my favorites. favorites. It, yep. Mine too. All righty. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. And thank you, Roland and Al, once again. And God bless.